All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I've seen enough of our agenda, uh, folks who are on our agenda join. Um, for those of you that are watching live on Facebook, you can submit comments in the chat or questions in the chat, and I'll be sure to ask as many as we can tonight. To get started, uh, Weston, I'd like to invite you first to go uh, and give an update from the mayor's office. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Uh, Josh sends his regards. He was unable to attend, so he asked uh, me to step in today. Um, so I don't know that I have any particular items. He did mention that there was a lot of interest um, at your last meeting about um, parking. Um, and I don't know if he has reported to um, this community council or not uh, that the that, that parking will re return to normal enforcement on November 1st. So any sort of restrictions that were lifted uh, for the pandemic um, earlier on in the summer, I guess late spring, um, will go back to the way that they have been before on November 1st. Um, so that you know that'll that'll help with some um, lingering cars and RVs that might be um, parked throughout uh, the area that seem seems to have collected over <laughs> over time. Um, so hopefully we can uh, take care of those and and if there are people. Uh, residing there, hopefully we can also get them into some appropriate services and, and, and help them out. Um, so that was the one item that he told me uh, would be of interest, but is there any any other questions? And and I have, I know a few of you, um, but I haven't met everybody. I'm the Director of Community Outreach for Mayor Mendenhall um, and, and the city um, over over Josh. And, and so I don't get to get out as much as I would like to community councils, but happy to come today. Thanks. Uh, I think one update that I'd like to, to know is uh, just a general update around COVID and the city's kind of response at this time. Sure. Um, I think we're still sort of processing um, the governor's new restrictions and the new guidelines. Um, it doesn't really have a huge impact on um, uh, everything that we've, we've been doing um, because we were in orange for so long. Um, it's, it's really kind of back to that. It doesn't really change business practices. Um, uh, the, the one question we're still trying to get clarity around is there seemed to be an opening for um, groups to gather larger than uh, 10 if they were, um, uh, had an organizational structure over them. And that's mainly for oversight to ensure that proper mask um, usage is taking place or social distancing is taking place. Um, so our, our, uh, our permitting and licensing department has been um, kind of aligned on that and keeping that pretty strict. Um, that I don't think actually goes in place until the 29th. Um, and so that's, uh, so you know, we're still kind of ironing out the details on how that will work. Uh, the other thing that we hear a lot about um, that we're also trying to deal with is, um, you know, a lot of parties, uh, a lot of, and, and really it's the, it's the space that COVID seems to be spreading the most right now is these social interactions among um, residents, uh, you know, not, at, not necessarily at schools, especially in Salt Lake City, because we're not uh, back in school in person, um, but it's happening at home. It's happening um, among younger people in uh, large gatherings at homes, a lot of, a lot around the university. Actually, we're hearing a lot of complaints about that. Um, so we're seeing what we can do. Obviously, it's a really complicated situation because, you know, getting police involved in those sort of enforcements is is complicated. It's hard and it's unsafe for them. We continue to try to work with educating and um, uh, providing information. There are some avenues that we can be a little more restrictive and that's through the city has a party ordinance um, that you know we do use, uh, it's around noise, it's a noise oriented ordinance, um, but usually people are only aware of a party happening that might be COVID unsafe if there is also associated noise problems with it. Um, so if you are concerned about um, a party happening um, and uh, potentially unsafe COVID practices, um, definitely report it to PD so that it can be uh, followed up on. We're talking with them about how we can be a little more um, uh, on top of party enforcement um, in that regard, since it, it 
both is a potential noise problem, but also a COVID problem as well. Does that address everything you're looking for, Tori? Yeah, I, I think that was good. Uh, we did have a question in the chat. Cody, why don't you just ask your question uh, instead of having me read it off? Okay, thanks. Um, I was just wondering what kind of services would be provided to people that were like living in their cars in our neighborhood. And I guess kind of like, will they be cited and I guess ticketed and, or kind of will social services be provided uh, first off? That's <laughs> a great question. That's a great question, Cody. I don't know that I have the best answer for it because I'm I'm still learning what the process is. Um, I I assume that Josh has talked to you about our community commitment program, um, which is sort of our new um, process around um, encampments. Um, and what we're sort of realizing, especially because we've had the restrictions on parking lifted for so long, and there's been a, a, a growing number of, of people living out of their cars or RVs in the community. Um, we're starting a conversation about this population perhaps needs a different kind of outreach um, because they um, you know, aren't congregated uh, often in mass with a, a bunch of people. Um, sometimes go unnoticed uh, because cars are parked all over the place. Um, and then sometimes, you know, they're mobile and, and don't stay put or oftentimes those who are living out of cars might be newly homeless um, and possibly um, maybe still working and maybe underemployed and unable to, to meet, um, you know, rent, rent or, or mortgage payments of, of any kind. So um, what, uh, you know, we have all of those um, services available. Of course, we would offer to anybody, including those encampments um, through the community commitment program. But getting those services to those individuals living in cars or RVs is just potentially a little more complicated or might you, might, might need a different uh, tactic that we're just, we're not set up to have. Because right now we uh, contract through VOA and they're kind of, you know, boots on the ground going up to encampments that we're aware of that we see that, this is, that the residents notice and see and let us know about um, and do a lot of interactions with those individuals there. And um, it's just sometimes harder to find those who might be living out of their cars and, um, uh, the approach to those living in the cars might be just a little different as well, um, just because they have that um, enclosure and can, you know, lock doors and it's just different. So we, we just have to process what that looks like and we haven't done that yet, at least not that I'm aware of, um, but I have talked to our homeless um, outreach team at the city about coming up with a plan to address that um, in a potentially different way than we have traditionally in the past. And from my understanding in the past, yes, there's been citations and towing and, um, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, that, that might be the, the standard that's gone back to. Uh, but obviously I think it would be better if we could provide um, better resources and services in an appropriate way to those who are living in target RVs. Does that answer your question, Cody? Yeah, definitely. I, I work in homeless services myself, and I've noticed that the people in their cars, like you said, is an important distinction that is different than people that camp or people that uh, go to the shelters. So it would be cool to see kind of approach an approach for that since the typical, like you said, the typical approach doesn't seem to really fit them. And I would absolutely love any insight that you have. Um, I, I'll drop my uh, email into the chat here. And if you have any thoughts on that, I would, I would love them. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Cody. Uh, any other questions for Weston? All right, I'm going to move on to the next item. Thank you, Weston, for being here and for representing the mayor's office. And thanks for sharing your email. I'll make sure that I put it in the Facebook uh, comments as well so that folks can, can contact you. Uh, the next item on the agenda, and, and um, Tom, I, I don't know if you're representing the city on 900 yes. South. Uh, yes, I am. But you're next on the agenda if you'd like to go. Great. And Turner, remind me how much time you'd like us to take. 
Uh, we gave you 30 minutes tonight because Kent had mentioned that you wanted to do somewhat of a presentation and then do Q&A. Um, so yeah. I have given you the ability to share your screen if you need to. Okay, I'll I'll give a little intro and then Jason's gonna share his screen and, and take us through more of the details. Uh, the, the gist of the project is that we are going to reconstruct uh, 900 South between 900 West and Lincoln Street, which is just east of 900 East. So that's about 18 blocks of 900 South. Um, it's not gonna be a complete reconstruction. It'll, it will just be partial depth is what we call it, where we, we grind down and dig down just a few inches and then, and then repave the street. But there are some other uh, really interesting improvements that are coming along with that better pavement. So as most of you know, uh, the Route 9 service on 900 South that kicked off last year, uh, or is it, was it last year? Yeah, last year, two years ago. Um, it continues to operate at, at record numbers and, and this project will uh, improve those numbers and that service still. Uh, we are going to continue the Nine Line Trail that is a beloved Glendale resource all the way east up into 9th and 9th. So you'll be able to ride your bike or walk uh, with your kids, uh, with your family, um, all the way up into that area and then all the way out to Redwood. Um, and then in the coming years outside of this project, we intend on continuing the nine line all the way up to Immigration Canyon so that it extends the width of the city. We're also gonna be making a lot of utility improvements, new water lines, some sewer fixes, and, and Jason's gonna get into some more details on that um, and, and what that means for you guys as a community, what it means in terms of timeline and how we'd like you to, to get involved so that we can share information with you and, and get your feedback as well so that we make sure that the design works really well for you. So I'll let uh, Jason take it away. Hey, thanks, Tom. I was getting worried you're gonna steal all my thunder there. No, just some of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it and thanks, Turner and uh, the council for having us and allowing us to talk about this uh, exciting project that Tom just introduced. Um, you know, one of the key parts of this project and that the city has put a premium on is uh, public participation and including, um, you know, your thoughts, your feedback um, throughout the entire process from this preliminary uh, or planning and preliminary design through construction. Um, so uh, Tom or Gene, if you would mind putting the website email, this contact information to the chat for everybody, that would be great. Um, yeah, I can do that. And please go to the, the website as well at 900southslc.com. There's a lot more information on the website and we'll be continuing to put information there. Um, but in the meantime, oh, well, before I, go on on that uh, there's also a survey on the website that we would love for you to fill out um, the survey is pretty basic right now really the intent of it is just to get uh, get your contact information uh, your awareness of the nine line trail um, and then the best way to communicate with you whether it's their email um, or one of the various social media platforms that the city uses so um, if you're interested in finding out more please uh, go to the website and uh, fill out that survey as well. Uh, in terms of uh, the council, you know, this is the first of three meetings that we'll have with you, um, you know, through the final design process. Tonight, we'll just touch on the concept uh, in, you know, more general terms. Uh, in the next uh, month or two, we'd like to visit again and talk more about the uh, preliminary design um, and, and get your feedback on that. And then finally, we'd like to get your thoughts and share the final design as we get to that point um, sometime next year. So, but again, in the meantime, please uh, continue to, uh, you know, check the website. And throughout the process, we'll be sending out different social media posts uh, and uh, information through uh, the various platforms. So, you know, as I mentioned, engagement is critical. Um, you know, we're going to meet with the eight different neighborhoods twice during this preliminary design planning and preliminary design phase. Um, and then we'll also be doing a uh, tabletop, uh, outdoor tabletop 
events. We just had two this past weekend, one at the Blue Copper in the Central Ninth area at 200 West and 9th South, um, and then one at the Smiths on the east side on 8th South and, um, what is that, about 9th East. Um, and we'll also be at the uh, Coffee Garden at the 9th and 9th, as well as at the Beans and Brews on 5th East and uh, 9th South this, uh, this coming weekend, Friday and Saturday. Um, in addition, we'll also be meeting with residences and businesses one-on-one -on -one, um, to make sure that A, they're aware of the project and continue to address any concerns and answer any questions that arise. Um, hopefully you've noticed, if you've been on the corridor, you've noticed posters along the corridor. Those posters have QR codes that'll take you right to the website. Um, we'll also have a, we have a video on the website now with the project team introducing the various elements of the project. Uh, which we'll get into um, and then we'll also be doing uh, small group meetings in the small group parking meetings in the central ninth and ninth and ninth areas to work through some of the parking issues in that area so it sounds like uh, many of you already uh, enjoy the nine line trail uh, this is a look at the study area and the neighborhoods that it connects our study area again is from 9th West to 945 East or Lincoln Street and the trail itself will be extended from about 700 West uh, to Lincoln, Lincoln Street so about well approximately three miles of the corridor so it'll connect eight different neighborhoods Liberty Park the zoo um, you know as we extend eastward um, you know connecting the west side to the east side into Immigration Canyon is, is the goal so it's an exciting project So proposed improvements, uh, as Tom mentioned, the nine line trail, uh, the trail will be on the south side of 900 South to be a 10 foot trail, a 10 foot wide bike trail on the south side. In addition, we'll be including uh, sidewalk and trail crossings at each intersection, uh, including the UDOT intersections. UDOT is a uh, key player and partner in this project and we're working closely with them right now. And Tom mentioned uh, the enhanced bus service will also be including uh, improved bus stops at each location as well. So as you can, well, let me go back. The cross section here is from the 2018 uh, study, uh, nine line extension concept study. So this is kind of an idea of what the, the cross section will be with the trail on the south side and additional green space uh, as one of the benefits. And Tom, feel free to jump in if you'd like at any point. Um, in terms of roadway construction, uh, Tom mentioned the par partial depth reconstruction. That will be included throughout the entire length of the project. Uh, one of the major changes will be a lane reconfiguration, moving from uh, the four lanes or five lanes uh, to a three lane configuration, uh, you know, one lane in each direction plus a center turn lane. Um, that will be from 700 east to 200 west. Um, in addition, new curb and, gut curb and gutter. Uh, will be included where necessary and then in the central ninth area specifically which is if you're not familiar it's from west temple to 300 west um, we're looking at new landscaping in addition uh, and additional parking uh, in the in that area as well so tom mentioned the utilities uh, which is a major part of this project uh, public utilities uh, is uh, designing a new water line from 945 East to, 9, to 900 West, the entire length of the project. In addition, uh, the city will be upgrading the sewer main uh, and connections where necessary. Uh, specific to the Central Ninth area again, uh, we'll be burying the power lines in that area. Um, and then storm, dra storm drainage improvements will be included throughout the project. And where it's feasible, we'll be looking at low impact design, which uh, essentially mimics the, the natural environment where filtration can happen naturally. So, you know, before I go on, it should be noted, we mentioned the uh, variety or the, the number of elements of the project, but this is a great project and a great example of the city collaboration. It's unique where you'd have the RDA, uh, which is uh, working closely with the Central Ninth area, uh, the Transportation Department uh, managing the uh, kind of the preliminary design and the trail component of it. Engineering uh, obviously heavily involved and will be as this moves into final design and construction and then utilities. So it's uh, 
it's a it's a great thing to point out that uh, each of these departments is coming together uh, to facilitate one project and to avoid future um, improvements and disruptions in the future. So, um, so with that, there's a number of proposed benefits. We mentioned the nine line trail. Um, so this trail, this project will bring about three miles of a uh, new trail extension. Um, you know, plus the you know the, the safety improvements at each intersection and the visibility of pedestrians and cyclists along the corridor. Um, you know, the the bus stops will uh, definitely increase visibility, uh, safety, and comfort um, at those at those locations with the trail. Um, in the lane reconfiguration, there will be uh, increased green space along the corridor. Um, with the construction, the reconfiguration, uh, that will extend the life of the project or the, the pavement for up to 15 years. Um, and then with the, link, the lane configuration, uh, you know, the, one of the two of the benefits is number one, a reduced, uh, reducing speeds. Uh, speed mitigation and then safer turning movements uh, specific specifically the left turn uh, turning movements with the addition of the center turn lane uh, with the utilities uh, you know the utilities are upgrading to accommodate growth for up to the next 100 years um, so hopefully we won't see uh, utility uh, improvements and disruptions well, specifically the city utilities uh, fiber and other things outside of the city control may still occur but uh, water and sewer will definitely be uh, updated and accommodated uh, well into the future. And then, as I mentioned, the improved uh, storm drainage along the corridor as well. So project timeline, uh, this where the rubber beats the road, which you know everybody's curious about. Right now, as I mentioned, we're in the uh, preliminary planning our planning and preliminary design phase. So we definitely want your feedback during this, this phase. Uh, construction for the central ninth area, the roadway improvements, the trail, um, the landscaping, the parking, that'll begin next year along with the uh, water line and sewer improvements. Uh, it should be noted that the utility improvements will occur along the, the entire study area from 900 west to 945 east. The roadway improvements will only occur uh, beginning next year uh, in that central ninth area and then you know as we look towards spring summer 22 uh, will be construction will begin for the rest of the corridor um, you know it, one thing that the city is definitely cognizant of aware of and is working diligently to uh, mitigate its impacts to businesses and residences during construction uh, once we have a contractor uh, on board uh, the city will work closely with that contractor to phase the project uh, to minimize those impacts and ensure that the flow of traffic uh, definitely remains. Um, so, you know, it's it's uh, something that the city is very sensitive to and will be working closely with the contractor to make sure that uh, impacts are minimized as much as possible. Um, and then, Tom, did I miss anything or Gene? Good for me. Okay. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, just uh, definitely time for questions. Yeah. Please. Um, would you mind stopping sharing your screen so folks can see you? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sarah, you had talked about the timeline on Facebook and just want to make sure that you joined in time to hear that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes, I had a question. Go ahead. About the I guess I've noticed there's a lot of encampments and I guess is there gonna be I guess it's social like an outreach program with that kind of tandem because I've just noticed like a lot of encampments on ninth south especially because like the youth resource center is right there we, we don't have any planned any um outreach specific to that population planned 
right now, Cody, but we do hope that by having the the information for the project out physically on the street, um, that, that anybody who's on that street will, will be able to see it and, and find out more about it. And, and there's enough information on those, um, um, on, the, uh, on the posters so that people know exactly where they can go to find information and, and, uh, and what the project's all about. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for asking. Tom, it looks like you answered a number of questions in chat. I don't know if everybody's yeah. been paying attention to the chat. Are there some questions, Tom, that you, uh, would benefit everybody, you think, or if you want to share some of those? Uh, yeah, so just to reiterate, this is definitely not the, you know, pencils down, speak now or forever hold your peace kind of meeting. This is really just the, the first one. And, and we'll be back a couple more times to, to talk about how the project's going, to get additional feedback. Uh, but please feel free at, at any time to call us or send us emails with, with any ideas that you have. If you're out walking or driving and you're like, oh, that really needs to be a part of this project, that, you know, this crosswalk or that light or something like that, um, that those, are the, those are the kinds of things that make projects just superb instead of just kind of so-so. So we, we want to make sure that it works for you guys uh, as well as it can. And then just to reiterate uh, the, the timeline, as far as as far as impact specifically to Glendale, um, you you probably won't be seeing that until as early as late 2021 or early 2022 when we have some utility work going on and and then the road reconstruction. So it is still a ways off. We want to make sure that everybody has plenty of advance notice and and also enough time to share the word with their neighbors and and contacts. So we would appreciate you guys um, spreading the word as well. Sarah in the in the chat um, just stated uh, kind of the, the same thing that uh, that Cody was talking about that it, it does seem important to coordinate with somebody working with homelessness um, as there are a lot of um, uh, people experiencing homelessness uh, living hanging out on, on 900 South. So I, I really appreciate that, Sarah. Does anybody else have any, any questions? Well, I guess I had um, in a question on, I guess, if there was going to be, I guess this doesn't do really zone changing or just Right. incorporating like private development along that could along that ninth south in glendale and kind of the west side that's affecting us yeah there is one development the the west end development that's the um the trying to remind me of the word you're you're a better planner than i am adaptive reuse right it's it's an adaptive reuse of an of two existing buildings at, uh, just west of 700 West, on 900 South, and we've been working with them actually for about a year to make sure that uh, their access lines up with where we would like to also put a new, <clears throat> pardon me, a new crosswalk, so that people who are are visiting or or living there can easily access easily and safely access the nine line trail and and cross the street without having to go all the way down to Ninth West or, or up to the nearest crosswalk, so. Thanks. Yeah. And I just dropped a link to that project in the chat. Uh, there's a couple of different links. This is not the full project page. I will find that, uh, but I did share some of the information on that. Thanks, Turner. Uh, are there any last questions for Tom? Right. I think we will move on if that's all right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Turner will be in touch to schedule the next meeting soon with you. All right. And we'll look forward to when we get closer to a final design in the spring, let's plan to do maybe an in-person event or something, if, if it's safe to do so at the time. Uh, we'll do something as we get a little closer to a final design so we can talk through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll, we'll be in touch soon. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys.
Thanks. Appreciate it. Right. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to transition over to, um, Council Member Johnston, let me know, and, and Representative Romero, let me know that both of them have a conflict tonight. Um, there's about 15 other things happening tonight. So, uh, and same with Detective Oliver. So we, we have uh, two of the agenda items that we had planned we won't be getting to tonight. But the next thing I'm going to move over to is uh, just a discussion of community events. So the Glendale Community Council is planning a visioning exercise at the Raging Waters site. Um, the, the city has reached out to let us know that there's some movement in that area. Uh, they're looking at um, kind of visioning out what that site will look like and the, the future of that site. So I've included in the chat a flyer for an event that we're doing. Um, for folks that are watching live on Facebook, I'll put our Facebook event up uh, in the chat in just a moment, but wanted to invite you all out the morning of Halloween. Uh, we're going to do this visioning exercise and we're going to do everything in very, very close compliance with COVID-19 precautions. So everyone will be required to wear a mask. It will be outside, so it will be chilly. Uh, we ask you all to, to practice social distancing. We're going to do some exercises that don't require us all to be clumped really, really close together. Um, we've debated a little bit back and forth about whether we wanted to do something in person and, and to, to do this kind of exercise, we decided that, that Zoom is not gonna work for, for what we're hoping to do. So we do invite you to come out um, on Saturday the 31st um, to, do, to, to practice in this visioning exercise. And basically what we are going to do uh, is we're going to take all of the, the various scenarios that have come up throughout the years. There's been several ideas for what to do with that site. And we'll go through a process of kind of talking through, thinking about the resource requirements, thinking about how much the, each proposal would kind of serve the community. So we invite you to come out to that um, on, on the 31st. The... Um, uh, the next thing that I'd like to, to invite you all to do, I'm going to post in the chat a link to our most recent newsletter. Um, there are several surveys being done by the city right now on a variety of different topics. So I would invite you all, um, A, to sign up for our newsletter because we're sending out surveys whenever they come out as much as possible so that you all have opportunities to, to provide feedback to the city. Um, and, and we found our email newsletter to kind of be the easiest way, aside from our social media, to get that news out. So I'm going to paste in the chat a link to our most recent newsletter. Uh, if you are a resident, please go to that link and, and subscribe to our newsletter, and then be sure to complete the surveys. There's one specific to the Raging Water site, um, and I believe that there's two others that are linked in there. Um, with that, I wanted to turn the time over to the community. If you're aware of other events that are happening, things that are going on, concerns, questions, issues, um, I wanted to spend about 10 or 15 minutes just kind of giving folks an opportunity to talk about things that are, that are going on in the community um, and, and raise issues. I'll take notes and uh, to help plan our future agenda items, I will make sure that we get uh, these issues addressed, but just want to kind of turn it over for the next 10 minutes to, to talk through issues, uh, events, things that you know are going on. So with that, I'll shut up. Uh, DB, I, I know you just joined, but I wanted to see if you'd like to give just a quick sentence or two on the, the capital improvement plan uh, proposal that you're submitting to the city. You don't have to present or anything if you just want to talk, kind of talk through it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I apologize for being late. I was in another meeting too, actually, and I'm glad I came here, but I probably missed the good parts of it. it was, uh, is uh, Detective Oliver here? Did he? Uh... He, he's not. We Tonight's kind of been a weird night. Three of the folks on our agenda had a conflicting meeting, so they weren't able to make it. I've emailed him a couple times in the past few weeks without any response. But um, So I have a capital improvement project uh, proposed for my immediate neighborhood, which is kind of in the center of Glendale, right by the river. 
uh, right across from the new Three Creeks Confluence Park that they're building. So I'm on the west bank of Jordan. It's kind of like a little peninsula, 1300 south uh, and 10th west where they meet. There's no, uh, it's like a three or four part project or three or four components to it. There's no sanitary or storm sewers or curbs or sidewalks on about, I don't know, a third of a block on 10th West and a block, block and a little bit on 1300 South, right, right along the river there. It's, it's where the trail runs right next to 1300 South, if you've ever been on the Jordan River Parkway Trail, for those of you at the meeting. Um, and the trail is actually falling into the river there, it's eroding. Uh, so the project and constituents, residents can put in uh, capital improvement projects, requests with the city would uh, fix the street, install sewers, reconstruct the street, at the same time reconstruct the, that section of the trail, hopefully be able to move it away a little bit from the river where it's eroding. And there's also a 1.4 acre vacant lot owned by the city along that stretch, and that would become a park as well. Uh, there's been a few little hiccups in, in putting this in, and I was going to send you an update on it, uh, Turner. But um, one of them was the, they changed the process midstream, <laughs> and and I already had started the process in August. And then when I submitted, they said, "Oh no, you've got to submit this way," and so I had to resubmit. And then uh, I'm talking about the city changing the process, and they fully admitted that and apologized. But I don't know why they didn't think of it in advance. But uh, and so I resubmitted that, and then they took the project to other people who would evaluate it, and they said, "Oh no, you should break this into separate projects." you have a better chance of uh, getting it funded, which I understand that too, but it's also, you kind of have to look at the whole big picture um, because you can't do anything without the sewers. It has to start with the sewers. And they said, well, you should break it into the road project and break it into the park project. And the sewers aren't covered under capital improvement projects, I found out. But I did find out that they have it slated uh, to put sewers in, but preliminary design, I just found this out, would start in uh, 25, 26, 2005 or six years from now, just for the preliminary design. And so my goal now is I uh, have till the end of the month to kind of break that bigger plan up into these constituent plans, submit them separately to the city. And uh, as part of that, tie it all together, I think, in, in the one cohesive plan that it currently is, that's the way it was presented to the city and to the council, with the council endorsed it. And I actually should add that I went to every house on those two streets and everyone supports it. So that, that, that's really good. That's 24 houses, 24 people. And uh, that's kind of hard for the city to you know, deny that when you have that type of support firsthand. But I'll, I'll do that. I'll get that in by the end of the month. And, but I'll also, as part of that say, uh, please, there's a chance they could move up the sewer project. I talked to the guy at the city who's over that not a likely chance, but but they could. And so I'll push for that as part of this project because that's what has to happen first. You wouldn't reconstruct the road or the trail without putting sewers in, you know. So we'll see where that goes, but I think it's an overall pretty good capital improvement plan that would impact just more than this little neighborhood because there's a bridge now that's gonna to connect to the Three Creeks Confluence Park and they'll need access. So it'll, it'll improve sanitation, which is necessary being so close to the river. I should add that there's about a dozen houses on septic. So that's why the sewer is needed. Uh, and these are houses that are next to the river and there's no storm sewers there either. Uh, so they need that. It, it would it help the long-term health of, and sanitation of the river and of the neighborhood. It would improve safety on the streets and the, the street's too tight there where those two streets meet and there's a really tight turn. Emergency vehicles can't even get by there you know, if there were too many of them. And traffic is, doesn't get by there either. And, and the trail is right there too. So it would improve safety and sanitation and uh, also access, you know, if they add that new park, they could put a little parking in there. They could put pickle, is it pickleball? Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's big enough to put a, a lot of things in that park. I'd like to see a little playground, you know, that we already have one at the end of Modesto. And so it would improve, improve access, which overall would improve security in the whole area. You know, the more traffic you have, like, in the International Peace Gardens, they don't have a lot of problems because it's a very nice park and people, a lot of people go there. And so that's, that's the project. I hope that wasn't too long of an explanation. No, I, I appreciate it. Um, 
to add on onto that, I, there's one other community issue that we've been made aware of multiple times, and that's just the amount of trash that's generated um, by folks who are living in their cars, and that's primarily along 17th um, and, and in some different areas. And we are working with the city on a plan to a increase pickup of garbage at the parks because they've been a little bit overwhelmed in terms of the amount of garbage that's being generated. Um, so working uh, to, to increase the, the regular, uh, excuse me, increase how often garbage is picked up. And then the second piece is to request additional garbage cans to be closer to some of the hot spots um, where there has been a moratorium on cars um, kind of being dealt with and, and parking issues, um, just working on in increasing access to garbage cans. If you are in any of these areas, there's very few garbage cans where, where many of the, the folks are sleeping in their vehicles. Um, so as a way of kind of just addressing that symptom, uh, we've, we've been working with the city to, to fix that. Um, the, the last thing that I'd like to share as the community update is I've been working with the West Side Coalition to plan uh, flu vaccination events. And we, we had our first one here in Glendale over the weekend at Glendale Middle School. Um, and our second one is coming up on November 7th at Mestizo Coffee over on North Temple. So if you need your flu shot, they're drive-through clinics, there's no cost. Um, we get you in and out really, really quickly. We had, uh, we gave out over 300 flu vaccinations on, or excuse me, over 200 flu vaccinations on Saturday. Uh, it's a very quick and easy process. So if you're looking for a safe way to get a flu shot, uh, you can do that through one of our vaccination events. Um, and that, that pretty much covers what I came prepared with, but I wanted this time at the end of our meeting for folks that wanted to raise issues. If you, you have agenda items you'd like us to see, guests you'd like us to invite, or things you'd like us to focus on, uh, now is the chance to bring that up. A question, and I know this is a, an ongoing concern, um, but, and maybe, maybe you've already talked about it tonight, but um, the people experiencing homelessness and who are camping in the parks, I mean, there's, there's been one at the end of my block for, for a month. What, what is the city's response to that and what can we do or should we do? So from my understanding, and, and this is me repeating secondhand information, maybe Weston will have more, but what I've been encouraged to do by the city is to report camps in the SLC mobile app, because that gives them A, the data of tracking where the camps are, and B, it kind of categorizes in need of priority. Um, and then once they're reported, um, the city sends out a social worker and their outreach team to make contact and, and to work with those folks. Um, from my understanding, that's the kind of preferred way that the city's asked us to engage. But if I'm wrong, or if there's additional ways, Weston, I, I'd appreciate if you'd respond to. I'm so sorry, I was booted out of the meeting and I just got back in as you were telling me to respond to something. Okay. So I'm so sorry, I didn't hear the question. It's okay, DB asked about homeless camps and kind of the best way to interface with the city and, and kind of how we should respond as residents to those camps. <laughs> Had a little dog incident. Oh my gosh, this is working from home. I'm so sorry. Um, the, um, you know, probably depends on um, the situation, um, but in general, um, to report to our homeless services team to, um, whether it's trash cleanup, um, whether it's um, VOA outreach work um, that needs to be done, um, probably the most prompt way is to actually use the SLC City app um, to report something um, that goes right to our homeless outreach team or our uh, homeless resource team in the city and then they will uh, send it to whoever is best to address it whether it's um, uh, our contract with Advantage Services for um, cleanup um, or if it uh, needs to go to VOA for some outreach work. Um, so that's, that's usually the best way. You can also um, uh, do it on, oh thanks Turner, yes you can also do it directly online as well. Um, uh, would uh, at the link that Turner just shared is uh, totally appropriate, or you can call our heart team, um, which I don't have the address or the phone number right off the top of my head, but I'll 
put in the chat as soon as I grab it. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's the best way to get those things addressed. I did have a question, um, 17 South and the trash that's kind of collected in that area. Do you know, is that space on the lift um, locations being addressed by our current community commitment program? Um, I, I'm, I'm unsure, but it is a, a problem area that has come up repeatedly. I think we lost Weston. Uh, it looks like I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on with the internet. That's okay. Um, we're, I, I'll follow up with you and we can figure out if that's in, in the area you were talking about. Um, but from what I understand, it is being serviced and that's where we've just talked about increasing those services and, and providing additional garbage cans. Um, any other community issues or updates that anyone would like to provide? Well, I had a question about the 17th South and parking. I noticed a lot of like uh, semi trucks parked on 17th South. I guess is that is that legal? I mean, it seems like it would be. I just I've been playing tennis at those courts and noticed that recently. Yeah. So uh, and again, I'm repeating information I've been told. If I'm wrong, please uh, correct me. But from my understanding is it's legal for folks to park for up to 48 hours in front of the same place. And then as long as they move their vehicle, they're in compliance with traffic enforcement, which was what makes enforcing parking and, and those types of things very difficult. Um, and there has been a moratorium on traffic enforcement due to the COVID-19 crisis. And that moratorium will be lifted on November 1st. Um, so that those enforcement mechanisms can start taking place. I have a, a trailer parked out in front of my house that's been there for about three months, um, but th there's been a moratorium on, on removing those things. So I so the uh, I guess so the 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 semis would still be in compliance. I guess once that moratorium is lifted, since they'd most likely not be there very long. Yep, as long as they move within 48 hours, they're okay. Okay. For sure. Thanks. Uh, anything else? Yeah, this is Bryce Ripien from the Sorensen Multiculture Center, the program manager there. Um, so just letting everybody know that we are open at the Sorensen Multiculture Center. We're open from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Um, the boxing gym is currently open from noon to 8 p.m and it's all reservation based so you can visit our website uh, at the Sorensen Multiculture Center and you're able to reserve a 50 minute time slot on our website or you can come in at per in person and set up a reservation time again with new COVID um, guidelines we only have certain amount of slots available for um, our blocks um, also um, I was asked by Salt Lake City to inform everybody that our tech center is now open with limited access hours. Um, Walk-ins are welcome or calling 801-535-6533 to make reservation. Um, on the Unity side, they are open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 7.45 p.m. Fridays, 11 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. Free computer access, printing up to 10 pages. Um, we just encourage everybody to wear their masks when in the facility and when not exercising. Um, also, the pool is still under construction. So at the Sorensen Multiculture Center, our pool is not currently open due to construction. And uh, we will be hosting in-person voting at the Sorensen Multiculture Center in the small gym. So, yeah, so we're excited to be open and be able to provide those services to the community. Um, so yeah, feel free to 
visit our website or give us a call and we would be glad to help out where we can. Do you have a, an anticipated finish date for the construction in the pool? Um, it is still up for parts. Um, so we don't have an official date and time when the pool will be open. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're anticipating hopefully the end of December, but there's still not an official date given to us. Thank you. Uh, are there any other uh, questions, community issues, or uh, announcements? Are, are residents able to use the like the computers multiple days a week? Is there any sort of limit? Um, as far as I know that you're able to use it multiple times, um, yes. <laughs> cool, thanks. All right, well, if no one else has any other questions um, or announcements, I will we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for attending. Our next meeting is November 18th. Um, so we'll get the agenda out for that and see you in November. If you have issues that come up or concerns that you'd like to see on the next agenda, please email me. I'll make sure that I put that in the chat right now. Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks.